Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming. This week we're talking about the all new Odyssey and announcing new giveaways. Two of them. As I said in the intro, today we're announcing two giveaways to celebrate a fantastic 2021 and our awesome community here at Leadnap Gaming. So someone's going to enjoy getting a new Anvil Spartan in their stocking at the end of the month. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed and comment on each video until the drawing. All of you who commented during the IAE livestream and on the Argo Raft already have entries. Unveiled at the end of IAE 2951 and taking Jax off into the sunset is the Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern Odyssey, an all-new subcapital exploration vessel. Now, this is pretty significant since the only other exploration vessel in this class, the Anvil Carrick, didn't start life as an exploration ship. Some of you are already putting another ship in, but put a pin in that endeavor. For those of you not wise on the lore, the Carrick was originally a gunship, which, once newer and better gunships were introduced, was overhauled and put into exploration duty for the UEE Navy. Once retired from that service, they were made available on the civilian market for explorers. This is why then, for example, the ship has a tendency to be a little austere, why it has heavy armor, and that massive armory. Which is one reason the Odyssey is such a big deal. While the Carrick design turned out to be a useful explorer, the Odyssey from the moment the first lines on the blueprint were inked was intended to be an explorer. Lore-wise, that is. No surprise then, it's coming from Misk, the brand who already has three exploration and science vessels on the market. Of course, this is where we would be remiss in not mentioning the exploration ship a class above, the Endeavor. Though the Endeavor initially appears less expensive, the customizable configuration of bells and whistles just doesn't appeal to the wider exploration market, though a large number of hardcore explorers should still consider investing there instead. Now I have to mention, I love this thing. I'm a huge fan of the existing MISC bridge styles and the overall design and the way that MISC mounts their engine nacelles, though unless you're planning to throw a red wedding, no one really likes that all-chrome gallery on the Starfare. I'm no fan of the maze FPS architecture that the Starfarer has either, but CIG has moved well beyond that in ship design, and the general feel of the Starfarer has always been one of my favorites. The Odyssey has a lot of problems though, and I mean a lot of problems. Without even diving into the features on comparison, we run into first what we can't compare. Just about everything. The Odyssey is an exploration ship, like the Mustang is a muscle car. Yet all of the sales material, not a single word about sensor package. That'd be like getting a sales pamphlet for that Mustang without a single mention of horsepower or torque. In Star Citizen, there are different types of exploration ship. You have ships built to locate and explore jump points and planets, ships intended to search the surfaces of those new worlds, and of course science ships built to catalog and process those worlds for further exploitation and understanding. So which group is the Odyssey in? Who knows? CIG left us nothing of practical value in the sales pitch. Will it be faster than the racehorse that is the Carrick? Sure looks like a sluggish whale. No VTOL suggests a ship intended to remain in space. Though that vehicle bay suggests a ground explorer. CIG told us all about the metrics ship buyers want to hear before they shell out the big bucks for a pretty JPEG. Shields, guns, cargo capacity, and price. With the information in hand, the M2 and A2 are better ships and, frankly, might still even be better exploration vessels. So what about the stuff we do know? What about the stuff that really puts the Odyssey on the map? Well, the ship really only has one selling feature over the Carrick, and it's not the mining laser. It's that hangar, which, sure, the Carrick has one as well, but the Carrick's was designed to hold a snub fighter and then a small runabout. Well, we don't have a true size. My guess is the hangar on the Odyssey is roughly the same size as the one on the Polaris. Total size might be impressive, but really it's the height that matters most. The Carrick could carry a lot of ships if the hangar were not so short in height. I know a lot of ink has been digitally expended on the trick the Odyssey spends most of its sales material talking about. 
that mining laser and refinery. At IAE it felt quite unique, until you realize three other ships, including the Carrick, have refineries as well. Yes, on the Carrick it's tucked away and easily forgotten where no one roams anymore, but the other two refineries belong to Misk anyhow. Here's the one on the DUR, and who could forget this refinery? Of course, this brings up an issue. None of those ships have a built-in mining laser, which is going to be a massive headache for CIG to resolve, because the whole reason you don't buy the more expensive military version of the Starfarer is because you lose the ability to harvest the materials needed to make quantum fuel. And of course, well, the whole point of this ship is the refinery. So one of two things is going to happen. There becomes a second way to gather materials for quantum fuel, preserving the value of all the ships already sold, or mining lasers are going to start appearing on old ships like they were a giveaway at an Oprah filming. In either instance, you're probably safe from the change with the Odyssey. After all, you have the mining laser. This falls into my paper fallacy though, because the practicality of the laser is pretty poor. Let's first remember how ship mining works compared to FPS and ground mining. Lots of small ship movements, which isn't a big deal because the prospector has VTOL engines to help keep it hovering in place efficiently. The Odyssey, on the other hand, is massive. So now you're going to be maneuvering all that junk in the trunk around this mining field like the guy who didn't know they make ships specifically to do this. Worse, the Odyssey is about twice as wide as the Carrick. Would have been nice to know the projected mass here. So if you think it looks goofy now, just double it. So that's a lot of fine movement you're going to struggle to manage with those tiny directional thrusters dreaming of a VTOL system. Except you've got to keep in mind two other things. First, the mining laser is under the nose. And you're on a MISC ship. At least in the mole, the pilot can see what the turret miners are doing. Here, hopefully you're using Discord or local voice chat between the miner and the pilot. Meanwhile, we hope the captain's chair comes with a box of tissues, because the captain's going to be crying a lot thinking about how much fuel you burn trying to gather the materials to make more of the stuff. Frankly, it seems like just carrying a prospector or even a rock might have been more efficient. The Odyssey is a one-trick pony. Sure, it's got a mega hangar and a very nice looking vehicle bay too. With some Austin Powers skills, you could probably even get a Ballista or Spartan in there. Yet the Carrick has twice as much SCU, without giving up hangar or vehicle space. More importantly, that SCU sits in someday droppable pods, which are capable of carrying that ballista as well. More importantly, those pods could be swapped out for other pods carrying science labs, farm pods, building equipment, or who knows what else, maybe even a mining refinery. Which is all pretty damning for the Odyssey, and that sucks because I really like this ship. CAG has gotten so good at building ships over the years, and the Odyssey really beats the Carrick in a number of practicality ways we don't think that much about. Sure, it's twice the size, but the Carrick has so much wasted space, namely in its numerous and redundant hallways. At first I laughed when I saw Locker Room on the map, but having been in the roughly equivalent sort of room on the 400i, I actually really like the idea of having a central room where most of the storage and suits can be accessed. It makes so much sense, especially leading towards the hangar area. The galley is central, a common room that sits where people would otherwise probably naturally gather. We didn't get any berthing images, but the mostly individual rooms is a feature even Drake is giving their explorers. Like Perseus, what sells me is that everything is easily accessible and just a short distance away despite being such a large ship. Its size could be a serious problem given the narrow fit that Carrick has to most hangars, but most of us would rather use ship to station docking anyways. Best of all, unlike some concepts we get, the Odyssey is a ship that could easily be dropped into flyable status, though the refinery feature might still be an IOU sticky note, the rest of the ship's parts exist in the game today. Which is why we're giving one of these away as well. In some ways, this will run like our major giveaways have, but there are some changes as well. Of course, to begin with, each month I will be choosing 10 names from comments made that month on any video or live stream on this channel. Each comment on an individual video counts as a submission, but multiple comments on the same video count as one. When we reach 20,000 subscribers, the winner will be drawn from the names though there will be some other prizes as well drawn from both the names and from the community at large. 
If 20,000 seems like a long way away, there is one more catch. For every additional 10 members of Leds Legion, the Patreon support for the channel, I will drop the number by a thousand. There are more specifics to that which can be found on the Lednap Gaming webpage with all the details, full link in the description, or just navigate there from the Star Citizen page on the site. The Odyssey is a tricky ship. On the one hand, it's a fantastic looking and well-designed ship for exploration. Though feature for feature, it may end up weaker than its less purpose designed and cheaper in real life competition in the Carrick, which is already flyable as well. Even if the mining laser ends up a relative bust, the Odyssey Owners Club will be quite prestigious, leaving anyone who happens to be captain of one quite satisfied with the money spent acquiring it. Carrick killer it is not though. Lacking features like a drone bay, repair space, modular expansion to cover multiple roles like the capital explorer above both, the Endeavor. In the end, I'm not sure why Jax felt it was so special as a private space station. After all, there's at least half a dozen ships in Star Citizen that could claim that status. Of course, one has to wonder how much of the pyro system is left to be discovered anyhow, at least by anyone who already has flying access to the Odyssey. So let me know down in the comments what you love about the Odyssey. Did you pick one up? Make sure to share this with your friends, certainly be subscribed to try and win one, and I will catch you all next time.